Yes? What did you need? Yes? What did you need? Yes? What did you... This leads out to the courtyard. Just head for the door. We've made it to the courtyard. Oh no. What happened to this place? Everything's been torn down. The whole place looks... well, dead. It's like we're the first to set foot here in centuries. This used to lead into the castle's great hall. Looks like my father had it sealed up. I used to walk through here after evening meals. It was beautiful once. This was my mother's garden. It... Do you know how beautiful something can be when it's tended by a master for hundreds of years? She would have hated to see it like this. Wait. Something's wrong with the moon dial here. Some of the crests are missing and the dial is askew. I didn't even know the crests could be removed. Maybe my mother's trying to tell us something. I'm telling you, there's something strange with the moon dial. Well, as far as I'm aware, it's the only one in existence. The previous owners of the castle had a sundial in the courtyard, and obviously that didn't appeal to my mother. She persuaded an elven artisan to make some improvements. You can see the plates that show the phases of the moons, Masser and Secunda. And that's the thing. What's the point of a moon dial? I always wondered why she didn't just have the whole thing ripped out. But she loved it. I don't know. I guess it's like having a piece of art, if you're into that sort of thing. Hard to say. Maybe if we found the missing crests, we could figure it out. If I had to guess, I'd say the moment Mother fled the castle, Father went on a rampage. Knowing him, anything at all that reminded him of her was just destroyed. It appears that way. I suppose he wanted to put the past behind him. Perhaps if he had spent more time with us, he would have recognized the beauty for himself. Look around for the missing crests. Even in this mess, they should stick out. If we had the crests, we wouldn't have to keep hanging around this lovely place. If we 
had the crests, we wouldn't have to keep hanging around this lovely place. Very clever, Mother. Very clever. I've never been in those tunnels before, but I'd bet they'd run right under the courtyard and into the tower ruins. Well, at least we're getting closer. Let's go. I've never even seen this part of the castle before. Be careful. I don't know what- We're getting close. I'm sh- I'd always just assumed that the other tower was completely destroyed inside. My mother kept this a secret, even from me. She must have been up to something she thought was dangerous. Turns out my mother was sneakier than I thought. I wonder what she's hiding. Where'd you come from? We're getting close. I'm sure.
We're getting close. I'm sure of it. We're getting close. We're getting close. I'm sure of it. you come from? There you are.
done and done. This place. This has to be it. I knew she was deep into necromancy. I mean, she taught me everything I know. But I had no idea she had a setup like this. Look at all this. She must have spent years collecting these components. And what's this thing? I'm not sure about this circle, but it's obviously... something. Let's take a look around. There has to be something here that tells us where she's gone. My mother was meticulous about her research. If we can find her notes, there might be some hints in there. I had no idea her laboratory even existed. She had an alchemy set up in her drawing room, but nothing that even comes close to what's here. Looking at the equipment and materials, it looks like she was trying to advance her necromancy. I don't know. Certainly not longevity. Kind of a waste of time for a vampire. Not that I ever saw. My mother had a bit of a thing for magical constructs. Not... not what you're thinking. She just found them fascinating. I remember she used to keep a small journal. See if you can dig it up.
Any luck yet? You did? Let me see them. I only know what she told me. She had a theory about soul gems, that the souls inside of them don't just vanish when they're used, they end up in the soul cairn. The soul cairn is home to very powerful beings. Necromancers send them souls and receive powers of their own in return. My mother spent a lot of time trying to contact them directly, to travel to the soul cairn itself. That circle in the center of the room is definitely some type of portal. If I'm reading this right, there's a formula here that should give us safe passage into the soul cairn. A handful of soul gem shards, some finely ground bone meal, a good bit of purified void salts. Ah, oh, damn it. We're also going to need a sample of her blood, which, if we could get that, we wouldn't even be trying to do this in the first place. Hmm, not bad. We'd better hope that's good enough. Mistakes with these kind of portals can be... gruesome. Anyway, enough of that. Let's get started. Oh, definitely. Mother would have plenty of those materials in her laboratory. You just need to find them. Then the rest is up to me. Are you ready to go? I'm not entirely sure what this thing is going to do when I add my blood. Of course. What is it? I've been asking myself the same thing since we came back to the castle. She was so sure of what we did to my father. I couldn't help but go along with her. I never thought of the cost. Possibly. I guess even a vampire mother is still a mother. She worried about me. About all of us. But she wanted to get me as far away from my father as possible before he really went over the edge. Yes, you're right. I'm sorry. I just didn't expect anyone to care how I felt about her. Thank you. Are we ready then? Alright, here goes. Portal of the Soul Camp. Incredible. Incredible. 
It's simply incredible. The Soul Cairn is a tiny sliver of oblivion, the realm of the Daedra. It's ruled by unseen beings known as the Ideal Masters. Honestly, I don't know. Necromancers are always interested in souls, though, so that probably has some kind of interest. Nobody really knows. As far as I've heard, no one's seen them and returned to Tamriel to tell about it. I've read stories. Stories about fools that managed to... communicate with them. You give the Ideal Masters souls, they give you powers to summon the undead. It's all very businesslike. Because most of the stories end with the Ideal Masters duping the Necromancers, who end up dead or wishing they were dead. I'm ready when you are. stories about the Soul Cairn, but never thought I'd see it myself. So far, it's about what I imagine. There's no escape. Damn, Akaviri Shaman. How could I know it would trap my soul? Death is but a door. Time is but a window. I'll be back. Where'd you come from? Help me find my Arvac. He doesn't deserve to be in a place like this. Arvac, my horse. We came to this horrible place together. We were attacked by monsters, so I told him to run. Please, he's such a loyal creature. And he's been running for so long. You have to save him. A place like this will change you. Arvac! Arvac! Where are you? Arvac, please come back! Come back! Mm hmm You'd think a vampire would be right at home in this place. You'd be wrong. No. But there's no way she would have left it in Tamriel. She wanted to get it as far away from my father as possible. I can't imagine a better place. Then we find out where she hid it. If she's still alive. Well, as alive as she was before. Or as now. Or... You know what I mean. Probably to avoid whatever my father would do to her if he could get his hands on her. Or maybe her plan was to come back, but she was stuck here. We won't know until we find her. Just what my mother told me. I've also studied a little bit on my own, but there's not much. When something is trapped in a soul gem, and then the energy is used for powering an enchantment, the remnants are sent here. Well, I think it's specifically the black ones. I don't know if the Soul Cairn takes just any leftovers. Look at this place. Do you think anything would want to live here? The only things that can survive here are the Ideal Masters, the Undead, and the Souls themselves. Well, if you want to call that living. I don't think anyone's ever met the Ideal Masters. I'm not even sure anyone knows what they look like. They could be underground, flying above us. They might be the ground, I, I have no idea. Lots of theories. Some say they feed on them like I feed on blood. Others think they use them as payment to an even higher power. Almost like a currency. A very strange currency. Whatever they're doing with them, they've been harvesting for millennia. No telling how many souls are trapped here. Look around you. There are some extremely powerful undead here. Even a necromancer as seasoned as my mother would be willing to spend years trying to gain access to them. Exactly. It's a lost art. 
Most necromancers just raise up whatever bodies are nearby. A simple trick, really. Child's play. But bringing something from the Soul Cairn gives you something much more powerful. Ah, well, that's usually the trick. It's possible to do it through a simple portal. But to finalize the deal, you have to travel here yourself. And most of them never come back. This better not be all the things you just can't be bothered with. Someone with flesh on their bones. Let's just say I sold something to a guy who turned out to work for a whole coven of necromancers. How in the name of Zenithar was I to know the ingredients were phony? Do I look like someone that would double-cross a necromancer? You got it. Horse, wagon, and all. Not here without so much as a word. I used to be one of the best traders in High Rock, you know. How oh, people would track me down just to see what I had for sale. Very funny. And what exactly are you going to pay me with? Take a look around. Gold doesn't exactly win you any friends around here. I'll tell you what. I appreciate what you're trying to do, so I'll play along. The only thing I see around here in abundance are soul husks. Uh, you know, those ugly, fungus-looking things growing out of the ground. Bring me, say, twenty-five of them, and you can rummage through what was left on my cart. Odds and ends I've gathered over the years. Well, used to gather, before all of this nonsense happened to me. Tell me what you're looking for. And maybe we can make a deal, if you have the husks. No husks, no sale. Guess you have some scavenging to do.
This place tears at me as though I'm still alive, being drawn and quartered. I can't stand it anymore. Serana? Is it really you? I can't believe it. How do we get inside? We have to talk. Serana, what are you doing here? Where's your father? He doesn't know we're here. I don't have time to explain. I must have failed. Harkon's found a way to decipher the prophecy, hasn't he? No, you've got it all wrong. We're here to complete the prophecy our way, not his. Wait a moment. You've brought a stranger here? Have you lost your mind? No, you don't... You. Come forward. I would speak with you. So how has it come to pass that a vampire of mixed blood is in the company of my daughter? Safe? You call bringing her here safe? Has she explained nothing to you? Serana has sacrificed everything to prevent Harkon from completing the prophecy. I would have expected her to explain that to you. You think I'd have the audacity to place my own daughter in that tomb for the protection of her Elder Scroll alone? The scrolls are merely a means to an end. The key to the tyranny of the sun is Serana herself. When I fled Castle Volcahar, I fled with two Elder Scrolls. The scroll I presume you found with Serana speaks of Ariel and his arcane weapon, Ariel's bow. The second scroll declares that the blood of Cold Harbor's daughter will blind the eye of the dragon. Like myself, Serrano was a human once. We were devout followers of Lord Molig Ball. Tradition dictates the females be offered to Molig Ball on his summoning day. Few survive the ordeal. Those that do emerge as a pure-blooded vampire. We call such confluences the Daughters of Cold Harbor. Now you're beginning to see why I wanted to protect Serrano, and why I've kept the other Elder Scroll as far from her as possible. If Harkon obtained Ariel's bow, and Serrano's blood was used to taint the weapon, the tyranny of the sun would be complete. In his eyes, she'd be dying for the good of all vampires. And how exactly do you plan on completing the prophecy without the death of my daughter? Have you been listening to me? Like Serana, I'm a pure-blooded vampire. My presence on Tamriel is as much of a danger as hers. You care nothing for Serana. Or our plight. 
You see the tyranny of the sun as your chance at deification. And like Harkon, you won't hesitate to destroy anything that stands in your path. Serana? This stranger may call herself Vampire, but she knows nothing of our struggle. Why should I entrust you to her? This stranger has done more for me in the brief time I've known her than you've done in centuries. How dare you! I gave up everything I cared about to protect you from that fanatic you call a father! Yes, he's a fanatic. He's... changed. But he's still my father. Why can't you understand how that makes me feel? Oh, Sir Wano, if you'd only open your eyes... The moment your father discovers your role in the prophecy, that he needs your blood, you'll be in terrible danger. So to protect me, you decided to shut me away from everything I cared about. You never asked me if hiding me in that tomb was the best course of action. You just expected me to follow you blindly. Both of you were obsessed with your own paths. Your motivations might have been different, but in the end, I'm still just a pawn to you too. I want us to be a family again. But I don't know if we can ever have that. Maybe we don't deserve that kind of happiness. Maybe it isn't for us. But we have to stop him. Before he goes too far. And to do that, we need the Elder Scroll. I'm sorry, Saron. I didn't know. I didn't see. I've allowed my hatred of your father to estrange us for too long. Forgive me. If you want the Elder Scroll, it's yours. Your intentions are still somewhat unclear to me. But for Serana's sake, I'll assist you in any way that I can. Yes, I've kept it safely secured here ever since I was imprisoned. Fortunately, you're in a position to breach the barrier that surrounds these ruins. You need to locate the tallest of the rocky spires that surround these ruins. At their bases, the barrier's energy is being drawn from unfortunate souls that have been exiled here. Destroy the Keepers that are tending them, and it should bring the barrier down. One more word of warning. There's a dragon that calls itself Dernevir roaming the Cairn. Be wary of him. The Ideal Masters have charged him with overseeing the Keepers, and will undoubtedly intervene if you're perceived as a threat. Be careful, and keep my daughter safe.